folks, I hope you had a nice Christmas Day, Boxing Day and a couple of days after that. Um, as far as I'm concerned, it's still Christmas, so Merry Christmas to you all from a couple of days ago. Uh, I always think, to be honest, if you only celebrate Christmas for Christmas Day and or Boxing Day, whatever, then I don't think it's worth it. So I tend to celebrate from Christmas Eve all the way up to New Year's Day, and uh, that's what I have been doing. I have been very busy in the last few days, and coming up on tonight's vlog, I have done a uh, Christmas 2020 present haul, which I had, uh, basically everything I had for Christmas, that's coming up. There's an unboxing of a Z-Box uh, for December 2020, which only just made it, because it came today, and today is the 29th of December. Uh, I'm also having a bit of a talk, obviously, about Christmas and stuff, a couple of little videos coming up, and a poem, a new poem I wrote this year for my wife for the... Uh, 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 Christmas um, because even though we haven't sent each other cards this year uh, the one thing I do each year is I always write a new poem for my wife for Christmas and uh, I'll be reading that out later so it's a busy time isn't it I can't really say coming up is the advent calendars even though it's tempting I can't say that now can I uh, coming up my Christmas 2020 presents Hey up folks, I look like I've been dismembered, I've not, it's just my, uh, uh, and my camera I wanted to show you, and um, I'm going to show you what I had for Christmas this year. Uh, this is not a boast, I'm just doing it for my vlog, okay? Now the first item I opened was this. This was a present of my um, mum and dad-in-law, but I still call them mum and dad, I don't call them in-laws, I just call them mum and dad, uh, when I can get in it, hold on. And as you see, it's a Jack Daniels case. And when you open it, there's a 70 centilitre bottle of Jack Daniels in it, as you can see. And this side is a fantastic thing. I'll just pull it out so you can see it. It's obviously the top part of guitar, but it's a stopper. It's actually to put on top of the bottle of Jack Daniels. Uh, not that I uh, have many bottles of Jack Daniels that need a stopper, because it doesn't usually last that long. But if I put that back in, and basically, like I said, all you do is you just hold it like that, close it up, Put the clasps down, one, two, and there you have your nice little Jack Daniels collectible case. There, that was the first item I had for my Christmas, and that was off my mum and dad. I knew I'd get there in the end. <sighs> right, second item, well actually it's second, third and fourth, I'll just show them you went and get to them. Now, my wife knows I'm a massive fan of Death Note. And she managed to pick me up uh, two volumes of Death Note uh, for my Christmas present. And she didn't get me the other two because they weren't in stock. But they came in stock the other day and she bought me the other two volumes as well. So I've already got one and two upstairs. So that's three, four, five and six. So I've actually got the complete Death Note. Now, me, me, me friends watching this who bought me the complete Death Note in um, one book... It's absolutely immense book. It's about that thick, actually, this one book is upstairs. And the reason I've actually had these is because I can't read the big one. The big one is for my collection. It's a collector's piece, and I will not be reading that. And the reason being, because it's so thick and heavy, I can't hold the full force of the book. And it's not one you want to turn over and bend the pages or you want to break the binding on. So that was, that was uh, part of my Christmas present as well, those four. Uh, everybody knows I'm mad on jigsaws and I had this jigsaw off my friends from next door and it's a cracking jigsaw, a thousand piece Clementoni, a Disney one, uh, I'm looking forward to doing that, um, that is not where the jigsaws stop, off my sister, I had this one which is a set of four but I've just got the first one to start with, uh, the other three are called Story Mania, Chef Mania and Music Mania. This one's Beach Beach Mania, as you can see from the picture. And another jigsaw I had off another good friend of mine who knows I love Woz Gidges and he's uh, bought me this. And this is another Woz Gidge puzzle which I'm looking forward to doing, which will end up on my vlog at some point. Uh, this I had... Um, I'll just explain. When my mother passed away, she um, used used a thing called Shop and Scan, and we had a lot of vouchers left over, which were cashed in. 
And what my wife did is a really nice gesture is she took them vouchers and split it between me and my two sisters so she could buy us the last Christmas present off my mum. And she said she didn't know whether she bought me the right item. She could not have bought me anything more perfect. I don't know if you can see that properly. It's a limited edition David Bowie Monopoly. Um, and again, anybody who knows me knows I'm absolutely mad on David Bowie. I love it. I've got most of the albums. I've got a lot of the CDs. I've got a couple of the DVDs as well. And that really does go with my collection. So ugh, I'll put them there a minute out of the way. Certainly haven't finished yet. Uh, <laughs> off my wife. Who knows? I love drumsticks. A little bit of a sweet treat. I can put that there. Not will stand up. Well, it should stand up anyway. Uh, Funko Pops. I love Funko Pops, as you know. And I've had two this year. This one was off. Uh, a good friend of mine again, the same person who bought me the uh, jigsaw, the Wasgage jigsaw, Mike, he bought me that, that's the first one, and my wife bought me this one to go with some I've already pre-ordered, McDonald's ones, and uh, it's Hamburglar, you'll remember him off the adverts if you're of an age, he was one of the mascots basically of the McDonald's range, so I've got Hamburglar as well, that's a Funko Pop, you can't go through Christmas without a decent smiley set, and I've had a smally set, which is off my sister Paula, which is cracking. Can't wait for that, actually. It's got a really unusual smell. I've had some DVDs. Now, my nephew, Oliver, bless him, he didn't need to do this. He, he, he's, he's actually been and bought me a couple of things out of my um, wish list. And he's actually bought me uh, the complete Pink Panther films, all five of them. Peter Sellers, absolutely brilliant. And also something I've been after for quite some time. Uh, if you've never seen a touch a bit, of, uh, bleh, if you've never seen a bit of Fry and Laurie, it's absolutely fantastic. Some of the sketches and it's absolutely had me rolling around on the floor. And then we're off my nephew Olive. It. I've also had some more DVDs as well. I've had um, a Blu-ray off me uh, best friend Sarah from down south. She bought me a Blu-ray, Ant Man and the Wasp, to go with my Marvel collection because I haven't got that one and I've not seen it. Uh, I had Father Ted as well, the complete Father Ted. I'm looking forward to watching that as well. These are all good stuff that I want to watch. And this was bought for me as well. Um, as time goes by, it was bought for me by my wife. Um, she knows I love the old comedies. So I've got plenty of watching to do. Uh, again, another nice Christmas present. You can't go wrong. Chocolate liqueurs, whiskey liqueurs. They were actually with two other items, which are a mug. Which I haven't bought through, I don't think. No, I don't think I bought the mug through. Oh, I have, sorry, it's in the bag at the side of me. Uh, a mug, um, and also a, uh, let me think, what was it? A mug. This. Do you know, it escapes me. There were three items in it. There was a mug. Oh, I know what it was. It's a 300 piece jigsaw of um, whiskies from around the world, which again, I'll show you in a minute. Now, these are what Deb's bought me, and they are a fantastic set. Uh, as anybody knows, I'm a massive Liverpool fan. I'm also a massive Lego fan, so these were ideal. These are uh, figures of the football players from Liverpool Football Club. Uh, we start off with Sadio Mane. That was the first one. Uh, the second one is Mo Salah. The third one is Roberto Firmino. The fourth one is Trent Alexander-Arnold. The fifth one, which I'm dead cool, I think is dead cool, is the goalkeeper, Alison Becker. And to make this series complete, she went and got me this as well that goes with it. And it's actually the Liverpool team buzz. So I've got plenty of Lego to build over the next few weeks and you'll be seeing all that on my vlog as well. Ah, next items. Right. I love my music. Love me indie music. And my friend Janet, uh, the, the, the guy who lives next door, it's his mum, a uh, really good friend of ours, bought me this, the Essential Indie album. It's got fantastic stuff on there, like the Dandy Warhols, Iggy Pop, Ocean Colour Scene, the Cranberries, Primal Scream, Stone Roses, all the decent indie stuff. My wife bought me uh, an Erasure CD called The Neon. And again, anybody who knows me knows I'm a massive Erasure fan. So I'll put that there. In fact, I'll move these out of uh, the camera shot. That's better. A bit more room. Uh, I had this bought for me by my sister, um, Peaky Blinders. It's actually the full, the true story behind the actual program, and I've been. That's again, that's something that's been in my list for a while that I've been looking forward to watching. 
My wife bought me a biography of Jackie Chan. Absolutely fantastic. I'm looking forward to reading that as well. Superb comedian, one of my hero guys. Again, Richard Briers. Absolutely superb comedian. Love him in The Good Life. He was absolutely fantastic. Um, and I can't wait to read that, to be honest with you. That'll be my next book, I think. And Deb, being knowing I'm a massive football fan, also bought me another Liverpool Legends biography, Kevin Keegan. I've got that to watch, uh, that to read. So that's my books done. My wife also bought me a uh, bottle of one of my favourite whiskies, Shivers Regal. Definitely one of my favourites. Goes lovely with a bit of coke, that does. Or on ice. On ice is even good as well. You remember me mentioning about the 300 piece whiskey jigsaw? This is it. This was part of that present that you've just seen where you saw the uh, chocolate liqueurs. This was in the same bag as that. Nice 300 piece jigsaw. And the other thing that was in it was ugh, this, which is a mug. And it's fantastic because on it it says, if I was meant to be controlled, I'd come with a remote. And uh, if I can get the lid off, hold on. I can get the lid off. Nice big blue mug. That'll do for me tea, that will. Nice big tea mug, that one. Uh, I also add, this is customary. This is something my wife always buys me. Toblerone, and it has to be the white one. I love the white chocolate Toblerone. It hurts your teeth, but it's worth it. It's worth it. I also add a bag of Goulian chocolates off my wife as well, because she knows I love Goulian seashells. And these have got a mixture in of praline, milk truffle, coffee, crunchy biscuits, dark praline and caramel. So I've got plenty of sweet treats. The last two things now are what my wife bought me, and I'll just show you these. The first one's in cardboard. Now, if you remember me showing you that Erasure album, the, the Neon on CD, my wife also managed to buy it me on vinyl as well. And as anybody knows who likes vinyl, the sound of vinyl is better than any CD and any MP3 you can possibly listen to. Um, so I've got the neon to listen on vinyl as well. And the last thing um, was something that my wife had made for me um, uh, from, a, from a lady. Uh, I can't remember her name, but this was this was made for me. And this is fantastic. Uh, I'll be taking pictures of all these items at some point anyway. But I'm a mad Only Fools and Horses fan, and I'm a mad Lego fan, so she got me this. Which is basically, as you can see, it's a thick frame, and it's actually proper Lego figures of Rodney, Dell, and Uncle Albert. Ugh, let me just bring that back. Rodney, Rodney, Dell, and Uncle Albert, as you can see. And that's absolutely amazing. And that was the last thing I had. And, uh, yeah, I would definitely say this year, I, I, can't, I cannot believe how much stuff I've actually had. Um, lots to read, lots to listen to, lots to watch, <laughs> lots to do jigsaw wise, lots to um, put up in my, uh, when, I, when I eventually do make a room for my vlogging, um, I'll be having the um, Jack Daniels whiskey thing in the background in a cabinet to go with me Jack Daniels bottle that my sister bought me a couple of years ago, which basically is a Jack Daniels bottle that's been hollowed out. And at the side there's a hole and there's a set of lights inside it. And when you turn them on it makes the, 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 the bottle glow blue. But yeah, that is my Christmas haul. My Christmas present, really. Every Christmas present I had in 2020. Yeah, well, Christmas Day went and co it comes and goes really, really quick, doesn't it? Um, but the one thing we have done this year, which we haven't done more, uh, most years, is we've watched a lot of Christmas films. And um, I'm going to review a couple of them, actually. We watched one which I'd heard about last year and I've never seen. And my sister was raving about it and other people were raving about it as well. And it's called Christmas Chronicles and it stars Kurt Russell. Now, if you've never watched this film, you want to. Because if you like a feel-good Christmas movie where basically everything to do with Christmas, all the sentiment, all, all, all the meaning of Christmas is in this one film. And it's brilliant, it really is. It was a really, really nice festive Christmas film. I haven't seen a film that good, Christmas-wise, since Santa Claus the movie. So it made a big impression on me. Uh, we watched also Christmas Chronicles 2. Now, yes, it is as good, um, although it's totally different in story and plot. Because in the first one, it's basically about some people who make Christmas go wrong by accident. And in the second one, it's about somebody who wants to make Christmas go wrong on purpose. So, 
you know, it's very cleverly done, actually, very clever. And then the second one uh, is Goldie Horn playing Mrs. Christmas or Merry Christmas or whatever the hell you call her anyway. Um, but it's funny because obviously Kurt Russell, Goldie Horn. And in the first one, Goldie Horn only appears for about two minutes right at the end. But in the second one, she features a lot more. Uh, she's one of the main stars, don't get me wrong, but you do see a lot more of her in the second one than you do in the first one. But yeah, I would I would give them a good 9 out of 10, to be honest with you. I think they're really, really good. Uh, we also watched a film called Christmas with the Coopers. And this is a totally, to totally different type of film. This is a bit like a Love Actually type of thing, but with one family. And basically what it's about, it's about how all these different members of this family are... I've got their own lives and they always meet together every Christmas to basically pretend that they like each other because some of them don't, some of them don't like each other. But this is another good one with a lot of meaning, a lot of sentiment and a true story behind it where it obviously means that family is the most important thing at Christmas. And it is the most important thing at Christmas. I don't care what anybody says, not the presents, not the candles, not nothing, the treats, not none of that. To me, it's family. If you've got somebody that you love close Either brother, sister, mother, auntie, wife, husband, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever. That's important. That's why I don't like hearing about people who spend Christmas on their own. And it's not something I would I would love to I would ever want to do, to be honest with you. I never want to spend Christmas on my own. So yeah, we watched that one as well, and I'd give that one seven out of ten because it's got a, a very clever story. Like I said, a very clever story, a bit of sentiment there as well. Uh, we also watched um what was it called last night? Oh Noel. Have you ever seen that? Noel. And uh, it stars Anna Kendrick. And basically what it's about is it's about the North Pole. It's about Father Christmas's family, basically. Father Christmas's daughter and son. If you can get your head around that. It's not a bad film, actually. It's very cleverly done. And again, there's good sentiment there. There's good meaning behind it. Because, it's again, it tells you the true value of Christmas. is isn't the presence that you receive it's the presents you give and i don't mean presents like wrapped up presents i mean it's love it's understanding it's caring it's compassion all these things are gifts you know which you give and you shouldn't just give them at christmas obviously but obviously at christmas it's felt more because that's when you know that's that's when people come together and, and are happy to see each other and, and, and you know and if they've got anything about them they will really enjoy the time and savor every minute you spend uh, because that's what's important, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, we also watched one this afternoon called Jingle Jangles, A Magical Christmas. We watched that this afternoon. Now, oh, sorry, I'd give Noel 7 out of 10 as well. Now, Jingle Jangles, is, it's a very, very clever story, really. It's a fantasy, a really clever fantasy about a toy maker, basically, who gets betrayed and loses his family. And basically, it's about... Um, sort of trying to make up and, and get this toy maker back, etc., etc. But it's a really good film, and it's a musical one. Now, there's some good little musical numbers in it, and it's a good... It flows nicely. It flows nicely. And it's got some really, really good stars in it. Forrest Whitaker is one of the main stars in it. And it's, it's, it's good, again. It's got a clever meaning to it, family and all that sort of thing. And again, I'd give that one 7 out of 10 as well, because it did keep you going. It didn't make you think, oh, I want to turn this off, I want to turn this off. Now, on the flip side to that, we started trying to watch a film that we only managed 10 minutes of, and it was boring. It was wooden. And I hate to say it because it's Dolly Parton's Christmas on the Square, and it is so boring, and it is so wooden. The acting is dreadful. I hate to say that because I don't like saying that about Christmas films, but we couldn't keep it on. After 10 minutes, we could not keep it on. We just couldn't. There was nothing that made you think, I want to carry on watching this. It was all too overplayed. And, and, and like I said, it was as if they were reading off auto cues. It was, it was really, really not my cup of tea whatsoever. So, yeah, we filled in them films. And we've also watched, as well as that, believe it or not, Nativity 1, Nativity 2, Nativity 3. And we thought we'd seen Nativity 4, Nativity Rocks, but we hadn't. So we've seen that for the first time this year as well. And if you want a real feel-good films, a set of films basically where you can just turn your brain off, watch these kids enjoying themselves, watch the, the, the fun that they must have had making these movies. They've got good stars in them. They've got Celia Imrie in them. They've got Martin Clunes in them. They've got Neil Tennant in them. They've got Martin Freeman in them. They've got Pam Ferris. You know, there's a lot of stars in them. You've even got, who's it in there? Uh, Alan Carr. 
I've got the right one. Yeah, Alan Carr. You've even got Alan Carr in there. Chatty man. He's, in, he's even in it. And Ricky Tomlinson's in it as well. There's loads of stars in it. And it's really all about a kid's nativity. And each year, the kids put on different nativities to win competitions and stuff like that. And the funny thing about them is a guy in them who features all the way through the three... But then it's his brother in the fourth one called Mr. Poppy. And he basically is a child that never grew up. He is literally a bloke in his late 20s, early 30s, who's still about nine. He acts like he's nine. You know, he wants to run around and play with these kids and throw paper aeroplanes and, you know, have breaking wind competitions and all this kind of stuff. And he is a real, real funny character. But you can tell that he has real compassion. He has real understanding of kids. And he knows exactly what strings to pull to get the best out of them. And it's a, it's a really nice set of films. You ever get a chance? Nativity 1. Nativity 2 is called... Oh, I can't remember what Nativity 2 is called. Nativity 3 is called Dude, Where's My Donkey? And Nativity 4 is called Nativity Rocks. And uh, like I said, I would give them all 8 out of 10 all the way down the line. They are really, really fun films. And there's some really good sing-along numbers in there that you'll have you tapping your feet. It really will. And Nativity Rocks, if you could imagine a child's version of the Nativity done heavy metal with all rock gear and motorbikes and stuff like that, then you've got an idea about what Nativity Rocks is. It's really good to watch and we're glad we watched it. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I've watched a lot of TV as well. I've been watching a few of these, you know, When Christmas Goes Horribly Wrong, When Sitcoms Go Wrong, etc, etc. And I watched the When Christmas Goes Horribly Wrong. And some of the stuff on it was quite disturbing. Because in, I think it was 1987, 1988, there was a singer and he was called Tiny Tim. He bought a song out years before. He used to do these weird high-pitched ballads like um, Tiptoe Through the Tulips and all that. And he bought a song out. Which, to this day, I still can't work out why he bought it out. And it's called Santa Has Got the AIDS This Year. And he bought it out at a time when everybody was terrified of AIDS. I mean, I know they still are now. I don't mean that. What I meant is nobody knew exactly what exactly it was going to do to you and how many people could catch it and could you prevent it, blah, blah, blah. So it was really terrifying the life out of people. And he did this song mocking it, basically, saying Santa Claus won't deliver your presents this year. The reindeer are all blue because Santa's got the AIDS this year. And he keeps saying it. He keeps saying it all the way through. And all these stars who listened to it were kind of like, what? Did he just say that? And you have to listen to it again just to make sure you haven't misheard. But he did. He bought a song out called Santa Has Got the AIDS This Year. If you ever get a chance to watch it, it was on Channel 5 on the 19th of December at 10 to 10. And it was called When Christmas Goes Horribly Wrong. And it's really, really good because there's funny stuff in there. The stuff that will make you cringe completely, including a cookery lesson off Fanny Craddock, which I will never forget in my life after seeing it. And to, even now it makes me feel sick. Um, but there's all the stuff in there like Christmas trees going up in flames when they weren't supposed to. But I don't mean in a house where it burns down, nothing like that. No, this was like out in, in like a, a country where they'd put a Christmas tree in the middle of the country, you know, in, in the Times Square or whatever. What, it's not Times Square, but it's in Russia somewhere and it sets on fire. Don't worry, nobody gets hurt in any of these. It's not showing you violence or nothing like that. But if you watch this, it, you know, it's really good. It had me in hysterics sometimes. I was literally crying with laughter at some of the things, what, what, I've seen, what people have done over Christmas. And what made me laugh was that he'd advertised a film on there called Santa vs. the Martians. And I thought, wow, man. And he'd showed you clips from it, and it looked absolutely dreadful. And I came off, and I think I went on to either Netflix or Amazon Prime, and they've got it on there to watch. And I thought, no way you would not watch this film. It is literally cringeworthy television. It was made on a budget of $200,000. That was it. That's the, all the money they could get for the actors, the stagehands, the script, the bloody uh, the scriptwriter, the director, the producer, the flaming, uh, all, all the stuff that goes with it. The special effects are brilliant, honestly. It's like um, Blake 7, but imagine it was made in 1940, and then you've got an idea of the effect. But yeah, we've had a good time. We, we basically got through Christmas, enjoyed Christmas, loved it, had lovely meals, uh, as you can see from some of the videos, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Uh, but before I show you all that, I just want to show you today's unboxing, which is the Z-Box for December 2020. And here it is. Well, 
Well, here, folks, here we go, an unboxing, and it's the, oh, it doesn't say it on it no more, it's actually the December Z box. I will show you, so you can see what's in it. Right, we shall start with the t-shirt. Now, I would love to have got this a week before Christmas, but unfortunately, I got it today. As you can see, it's a very nice Christmas t-shirt. It's a Nintendo Christmas t-shirt and it basically says Nintendo Entertainment System and it's got loads of snowflakes and stuff and also the NES in the middle, Nintendo Entertainment System. So it would have been a really, really nice one really, that for Christmas. Unfortunately now I think it'll get put up for next Christmas, which is a shame really. Uh, the second item, uh, an Overwatch figure. I think I might have had this one before, I'm not sure. That could go into my, um, my box for what I'm going to give away when I reach a thousand subscribers. If I reach a thousand subscribers, I'm on 826 at the moment, and that's an Overwatch figure called Newit Widowmaker. That was the second item. The third item is absolutely brilliant. This is one my nephew Oliver will definitely love. It's basically Borderlands 3, as you can see, but it is a collectible duck. Now you might think, what the hell is a collectible duck? Well, I'll show you what a collectible duck is when I can get the light and get the thing off it. Right, a collectible duck. That is a collectible duck. <laughs> and it's done in the style of Moxie out of Borderlands. And does it squeak? I don't think it does, actually. No, it doesn't. It's got a squeaker hole in it, though, look. I don't think it squeaks, though. No, it's just a replica. But look at that. How cool is that, eh? A rubber duck for me bath. No, I wouldn't be using that in the bath. Look at it. Isn't it cool? And that's item three. And that is basically, when I can get it back in, a rubber duck. Which everybody should have at some point. Don't know if I've got that right or wrong. I've no idea, actually. Well, there's a hole for the hat, so I'm presuming that's right. <laughs> you can never tell, can you, when you've got um, something so weird as that. Let's find out, shall we? Do it. Yes, so there you go, that's item three, and it's a collectible rubber duck. I'll put the band back on so it's safe. And the fourth item, now I know these figures are 25 quid because I've seen them on there. They are collectible figures. Now anybody from the 80s will remember this series of Thundercats. And this is a collectible figure of Tigra. Now if you can see that properly, if I hold it down. No, you're not going to see it like that, are you? If I do that, you might be able to. Yeah, there you go. Tigre, and it's a figure a bit like the, do you remember a few months back I had the It figure of Pennywise holding the balloon? It's the same make, Minico. It's a Minico figure, um, very collectible. There's four in the set, which are Chitara and Snarf, Lion-O, Panthro and Tigre, and I've got Tigre. And that is the four items which are in my box, and if you add them up in value, that's 25. Those are 15, believe it or not, that's 40, that's a tenner, that's 50, and the shirts are usually about 15, so 65 quid for 10. This is the beauty of live vlogging, isn't it, eh? You never know when the phone's going to go. So, that's the box, it's Tigre, Widowmaker, knew it, collectible duck. And a really, really cool Christmas t-shirt. But unfortunately, it's arrived after Christmas, so it's going to be put up for next year. And that is my unboxing of the December Z-Box for 2020.
quite a good Z box that was actually. Nice, nice value because they only charged me ten pound. Because you remember me telling you that they were late. I didn't get November's till the middle of December, etc., etc. Well, the box is supposed to be eighteen pound each, and they only charged me ten pound each box because they were late. They knocked eight pound off each box, so I basically had a sixty pound box for a tenner, which I don't mind too much. You know, I don't mind that too much. That's, I can live with that. Uh, but yeah, like I said, I've, I've, I've enjoyed it. I've been enjoying my Christmas. Um, it's one of them things where you have to make the most. You can't just put it to one side and say, oh, no, I'll do that next Christmas. Just get it done. Because last Christmas, I did not know that that was the last Christmas I was going to be spending with my mum. I didn't know we weren't going to be seeing my mum ever again at Christmas. And uh, it brings home to you. It really does. It shocks you. It shocks your system because... You suddenly think, hang on, I could live for another 50 years. Because, of course, I'm 48, so who knows? And if I do, that's 50 Christmases I might spend without my mum. And at 48, that's, you know, she was only 71. So she wasn't old. She wasn't like 95 and decrepit. I don't like that, even though, obviously, I'm not saying 95-year-olds are decrepit. But if my 95-year-old mum passed away, I would more expect it than my 71-year-old mum, you know. And um, she passed away in August. And... It's at Christmas when you notice it the most because suddenly things that you would normally say and do at Christmas are not there no more. Ringing my mum first thing Christmas morning before she went with my sister's for dinner, not there no more. Ringing her on Boxing Day and asking her if she had a nice Christmas dinner at my sister's, not there no more. Who ringing me to ask me if I'd seen anything in the sales to buy for Christmas because what happens is my mum used to give me something small to open on Christmas morning. And then about four days after Christmas, she would literally say, go on on the sale, spend about 30, 40 notes, whatever. Let me know what it is. I'll give you my card details. Bang. Get you and Deb somewhere to each. Done. You know? So we'd have like 40 quid each or something to spend on. But, but it was the fact that I used to get the phone call. I used to look forward to the phone call because she'd ring me up and she'd say, have you found anything? I'd be like, no, mum, not yet. They only started yesterday. Don't panic. If I can't find anything, I'm not just going to do it and spend the money for the sake of it. I want It's got to be something I really, really want. And that's why, as you saw from my present haul, that Deb bought me the Davy Bowie Monopoly uh, off my mum for a last Christmas present. And that's, um, yeah, it brought a tear to me, I must admit. Um, but she managed to do it for me, me sisters, uh, both my sisters. Now, I thought that Christmas might have been the end of the heartache for our family, but unfortunately it isn't. Um, another member of my family, not my family, but my distant family, basically my cousin's husband, um, had a really, really bad heart attack a couple of days ago. And uh, he's been very seriously ill in hospital. And the thing what hurts my cousin, I think, is the fact that she can't go and see him. She's not allowed to go and see him. When she, when he needs people there, he needs to hear their voices. He needs to know, you know, that he's been missed and loved. And this COVID thing is stopping that happening. And I just think this year, to be honest with you, I think somewhere along the line, one of my family has either made a pact with the devil or something, because I cannot believe how much has happened to our family in four months. In four months. Because it's not only my mum that's gone, my uncle's gone, my auntie's gone, my sister nearly went, she's made a full recovery, thank God. And and now my cousin's husband is seriously ill. And it's just unreal. You can't wait for this year to end. I mean, people might say, yeah, but 2021 might be worse. I don't give a toss. I just want to see the back of this year. I just want this year to disappear into the horizon so that I can say 2020 is finished. Whatever 2021 brings us, fair enough. It might be worse than 2020. But I would like, love to put a line under, straight under 2020. And I was talking to my wife not long ago and I said to her, I said, do you know what I'm really glad of? And she said, what's that? I said, I'm glad we didn't celebrate anything special this year. Because you imagine if you'd had a baby, got married, graduated or whatever this year. You would always know that it was the year where hundreds of thousands of people died across the globe. I love my phone, don't you? Well, I've just come off with a big beaming smile because you heard the phone going and I picked it up because this phone call happened half an hour ago as well and I wanted to find out who it was ringing me because it was a mobile number. And the guy says, uh, excuse me, mate, he says, uh, have you got any gas cards in? I went, uh... Sorry, pal, I said, this is this is a house. This is a house, not a business. He went, oh, I'm ever so sorry. He says, I'm ever so sorry. He says, did anybody else ring? I said, uh, 
Yeah, I said uh, somebody rung us from that number half an hour ago. Anyway, we, we just exchanged pleasantries for a bit, and I wished him Happy New Year, you know, and hope he finds his card and all that sort of stuff, you know, managed to get a gas card. But, uh, yeah, that's just made me smile no end, that has. But again, you see, I can't, I'm not just going to go, oh, well, he just did my vlog, boom, put the phone down. I wished him Happy New Year. Because at the end of the day, what's, what's he done? He's phoned the wrong number. Haven't we all done it? Haven't we all done something like that? I know I have, hundreds of times. Have you noticed how, though, when you ring the wrong number, it's never engaged? Very bizarre, isn't it? Yeah, but getting back to what I was saying, yeah, I just want this, end, this year to end. I want uh, 2020 to just be over. If I could live it again, I would. I'd change a lot of things in 2020 that uh, if I got control of it again. But unfortunately, you don't get that. You don't get a rewind button. This isn't click. You don't get to rewind time and play it again and hope that you get a better choice. So, you know, you, you have to live for the day. I mean, my wife earlier on, we were sitting watching this film, and she said to me, said, well, if you don't want to watch this because it's not your type of film, I said, listen, Deb, it's Christmas. I said, it's Christmas. I'll sit here and watch anything you want. I'll watch musicals. I'll watch documentaries. I'll watch anything you want because we're spending time together. We snuggled up on the sofa. We've got a nice hot mug of tea. We've got the quilt wrapped round us. The dogs are sleeping in a bed. It's perfect for me. That's a perfect end to the year, that is, because that, that's how I want to end the year. And on New Year's Eve... Although we can't go and round our friend's house, we're Skyping each other. So we'll get to see each other. And we'll be able to have a drink over the internet, over the Skype. So technically, we'll still be in the same room. And if you can do that, make the most of it and do it. Because like I said, I didn't know that last Christmas was going to be the last Christmas I spent with my mum. I had no idea. I had no idea whatsoever. And it's been strange. It's been very, very, very strange and bizarre. Anyway, coming up, I'm going to read out a poem which I wrote for uh, my wife this year, and it's just called, Is Christmas. So yeah, like I say, each year I write my wife a poem, and this year I wrote this one, and it's called, Is Christmas. Is Christmas about the presents, the baubles and the tree? The decorations hung that play carols merrily. Is it about the smiles on faces that light the room in view? If that is what makes Christmas, the one thing missing will be you. Is it the taste of the mince pies, the pudding and the sauce? Is it the pull of the cracker with the corny joke, of course? Would Christmas not be right without the cards hung to see? If this is Christmas without you, it would not be Christmas to me. Is it the opening of your eyes as you welcome in the day? The layer of thin white snow that you pray and hope will stay. The merry Christmas wishes that are passed happily around. Without you, my Christmas would not be complete. This is what I've found. For it's seeing you open your presents, helping you decorate the tree, singing along with you to carols, that is Christmas to me. As we sit at the Christmas table, the meal and glass of wine, what makes this perfect Christmas is knowing your heart is mine. And I wrote that for my wife this Christmas, and she absolutely loved it. Um, and if you've got the, if you are a poet or you are a writer or anything, you will know that when you find beauty, you can write about it forever and ever and ever, and never get fed up of writing. And that's exactly how I feel about my wife. I could write poetry all day, every day for it. Uh, sentimental, I know, and sloppy, but uh, I'm an old romantic at heart. And um, on that note, I'm gonna let you all disappear i hope you enjoy watching the videos and enjoy the unboxings and i'll do another vlog very soon you all take care and have a fantastic new year all the best wishes for everybody bye for now